Hello and welcome to Pilates. We're going to start standing today and uh, I'm just going to slightly aim back down. I thought I had it far enough down, but I went a little lower. There we go. Okay, just so you can see a little bit more of my leg. Uh, I'm in a small room if you can't tell. So I want you to line up your feet with each other. And when I'm talking about lining up, I want right under the hips and our hip joint is here, our hip joint is not here. And when you think about lining up your feet parallel, your toe beside your big toe is the one pointing straight forward. And for most of us, that will feel like your knees are turned in uh, because most of us are naturally a little toed out. And if we're gonna work in a true parallel, that's where we are. But if you have that toe beside your big toe pointing forward, and you press down through the center of your foot and out through the top of the head with your eyes looking straight forward at eye level, the legs ideally just come around to the kneecaps pointing straight forward, yeah? Now, let's just find our Pilates breath. So you're gonna inhale through your nose, exhale through your mouth, get some width in your body on the inhale, and narrow on your exhale. So right, the rib cage is expanding out and coming back in again. And if the arms and shoulder girdle are soft, the arms will slightly float, kind of like you're in water as you breathe. A wave goes by. Yeah. Let's amplify those arms. Inhale, lift, exhale, drop. Just to get the core a little bit more activated today. One more of these, and then we're gonna do our standing imprint. So bent knees, straight line from your head to your tail, a little tip forward through the body. So the hip angle is not, right? The pubic bone's not tucked forward. And then all we're gonna do is inhale, imprint, exhale, neutral. We're just trying to get that low back moving. Quite often it's quite stiff, it doesn't like to move. So a little gentle pressure of the hands into the leg. And you're trying to just get inhale, imprint, exhale, neutral. Imprint and neutral one more here, imprint, and neutral. I'm gonna get you to stand up a little straighter. We're gonna go straight to shoulder shrugs so here. Just inhale, lift the shoulders up, exhale down. As we go up, that's called scapular elevation. As we go down, that's called scapular depression. Neutral is somewhere between up and down. And we're just going, okay, can the shoulder girdle move at this point in class, right? How smooth or bumpy does it feel? And then we're gonna to go to another action that our shoulder girdle does, which is protraction, retraction. So right hands are about chest height. You're just gonna take the fingertips forward and then pinch the shoulder blades towards you. Forward and back. Now you're trying not to round and arch. You're trying to just move the shoulder blades around that shoulder girdle. One more here, forward and back. And we'll drop the arms down. We're gonna do a little bit of awareness building, spatial awareness building. So I want your feet about shoulder distance apart. We're gonna start with the thumb. We're gonna draw a figure eight in front of us. Well, it's more of an infinity sign. We're just gonna play with what is the range of motion we can do here today, right? Now, as I go to one side, my opposite heel will lift off the floor. How far down to the floor can you get? How high up can you get? Can you get kind of right behind you? What do you feel in your body is restricting this movement at this point in class? Now, we're gonna do the same hand, but see if we can carve that infinity sign with our pinky this time, finding the back line of the arm. Once again, can we go all the way down and all the way up, right? Opposite heel lifts off the floor. This does not have to be fast. One more here. And then we've got to try it out on the other arm. So, right, we're going to start with the thumb, find that infinity sign. Then we're going to make it bigger. How close to the floor can you get? How much stretch do you feel? Where do you feel the stretch? Last one of these. And then let's go to our pinky. So, right, pinky's gonna carve. Now, 
right? Sometimes it's hard to find the pinky line. If you're just having a hard time with that, right? You can restart it a couple of times. Let me tell you, this is my unhappy shoulder. Took me about half an hour the first time I did this to figure out how to do this with my pinky on this side. Last one of these. And now that we're a little bit dizzy, we're gonna try a little bit of balance work. So all I want you to do is bring one knee forward. Make sure you're not locking out the leg you're standing on. Pick your foot up and go 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Put your foot down. Let's do the other side. Now you may notice my ankle wobbles a lot when I do this. It's cause I'm letting my proprioceptors figure out how to balance me, yeah? So I'm not trying to control it from my brain. So bring the knee forward, lift your foot up and go 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Now we're gonna challenge our balance a little differently today. And what we're gonna do is when the leg is up off the floor, we're gonna turn our knee out, turn our knee in three times and put our foot down. Notice when I'm doing that, I'm not doing all kinds of wiggling through my hips. I'm just trying to take my knee from point straight forward to out a little bit and back to parallel. So right, we're gonna start with the first leg. So right, the leg we're standing on isn't locked out. Bring the other knee forward, pick your foot up, turn your knee out, parallel, out, parallel, one more, out, parallel, Put your foot down, other side, bring the knee forward, pick it up, turn out and parallel and out and parallel and out and parallel and put your foot down. We're gonna do that two more times on each side. So we're gonna bring the knee forward, lift it up and we're gonna go three, two and one, put it down. Other side, bring it forward and turn out. Parallel, out, parallel, out, parallel, and down. Now, that might not be challenging enough for you. We're gonna try five on each side, right? If three is good, just do three. So bring your knee forward, pick it up. Five, four, three, two, and one. And put your foot down. Other side, we'll lift your knee up. Five, four, three, two, and one. And put your foot down. And you might feel a lot more through the front of the hip than you normally do when we're doing our balancing exercises. Yeah. Let's just uh, go down to the floor. We'll make that feel better in a moment. We're going to start with a cat stretch. So, so I want you to go onto your hands and knees. I want your hands shoulder distance apart when you get down there. I want your knees sit bone distance apart. Remember our sit bones are what ache when we ride a bicycle and they're much narrower than our shoulders. And right, if your wrists have a tendency to be sore, be up on your knuckles with your thumbs pointing away from your kneecap. Back of the head matches the back of the shoulders. You're gonna take an inhale to prepare. You're gonna exhale, pull your tail under, scoop your back up to the ceiling. Inhale, hold. So flatten back out again. Inhale, exhale, curling around. It feels like your pubic bone is coming forward as you round. Inhale, exhale, flattening back out again. So right as the tail tucks towards the floor, the pubic bone comes forward towards your belly button. Inhale into your back. Exhale, flattening back out again. One more here, take an inhale, exhale, Curling around, inhale, hold, and exhale, flatten back out again. Now let's try that on a two breath. Exhale, round, inhale, flatten. Exhale, round, inhale, flatten. One more here, round, and flatten. Let's just go on to our sides, do a little bit of rotational breathing. After having done our uh, figure eights or infinity sign, perhaps this will feel like less of a stretch than sometimes. Now, remember, uh, part of what's tricky about laying on your side is our hips have a tendency to be in front of our shoulders and we're not even aware of it. So I want you to notice right now, 
if you feel like your weight is all on your greater trochanter, which is this bumpy bit, it's part of your thigh bone, or do you feel like it's on the outside of your thigh? Ideally, it's on the outside of your thigh. So right, if it feels like it's all on the greater trochanter, just sneak your bum back a little bit like I just did. You'll feel it gets a little bit more on the outside of your thigh. That means your body's in a straight line from head to tail. Now you're gonna reach your top arm forward, shoulder distance off the floor in front of you. You're gonna inhale, point your top hand at the ceiling, turn to look at it. Exhale, turn your ribs backwards. Knees are still reaching forward. Exhale, let's come forward. Inhale, point at the ceiling, turn to look at your hand. Exhale, turn backwards, knees are reaching forwards. Inhale, hold. Exhale, coming forwards. Inhale, point at the ceiling, turn to look at your hand. Exhale, turning backwards. Inhale, hold. And exhale forward. Let's do it on the two breaths. So inhale, back. Exhale forward, inhale back, exhale forward, one more here, back and forward. Let's do this on the other side, please. So right when you lay on your side, you want to make sure your weight's on the outside of your thigh, not on your greater trochanter. So you might just need to sneak that hip back, reach your top arm forward, Inhale, point the top hand at the ceiling, turn to look at it. Exhale, turn backwards, keep reaching your knees forwards. Inhale, hold this. Exhale, coming forward. Now remember, it's about turning the spine, not stretching the chest. So inhale up, exhale back. You can still see your hand quite easily. And exhale, coming forward. Inhale up, exhale back. Inhale, knees are still reaching forward and coming forward one more here inhale up exhale back inhale exhale forward let's do it on the two breath inhale back exhale forward inhale back exhale forward one more back and forward let's go on to our backs we're gonna to go to a little bit of hip roll right now, which is the exercise where we're lifting our pelvis up off the floor, articulating our spine one vertebra at a time. If you've had some sciatica lately, you might wanna just lift without the articulation through the spine. So you wanna have your legs within the width of your body, right? Ideally feet in alignment with those sit bones, collarbones are wide. And maybe you're in neutral already, right? Is your pelvis heavy, low back light, and ribs heavy? Let's take an inhale. Exhale, imprint, pressing your feet, roll on up till you're on your shoulder blades and your knees are over your ankles. Take an inhale. And exhale, soften through the rib cage and come back down. Inhale. Exhale, imprint, pressing your feet. Rolling up one vertebra at a time. Take an inhale at the top and exhale, roll back down again. One more of these, exhale, roll up. Inhale at the top and exhale, rolling back down again. Now let's make it a two breath. So exhale, roll up, inhale down. Exhale, roll up. Inhale, roll down. One more, rolling up and rolling back down again. Now, if you like something extra under your head, you're gonna grab it, pop it under your head, and let's double check we're in neutral. Yeah, pelvis down, low back up, ribs down. Bring your arms up over your chest, straight arms, palms facing each other. And we'll just do a little bit of protract and neutral here. We're not going to retract, just protract and neutral. And when you're in neutral, your upper back and your upper chest will feel equally wide. We're gonna do one more of these. And then we're just gonna exhale, reach both hands towards the floor above your head, inhale in front of your chest. Now, if you're working on glenohumeral timing, in other words, your upper arm bone moving in your shoulder joint uh, with the shoulder joint staying stable, 
you're not gonna let your arms drop below your temples because the only way we get there is by a change in that shoulder joint or shoulder girdle, yeah? Let's make this a circle. So you're gonna inhale, reach back, exhale, circle your hands around to your hips. Inhale, up through the middle and exhale, circle to your hips. And once again, if you're working on that glenohumeral timing, your arms will never drop below the height of your torso towards the floor. Yeah. If you're getting down there, you're starting to be in a place where the shoulder joint has to change to make this circle happen. One more up and around. Now let's reverse. Reach out your fingertips as you come around the outside towards the top of your head, turn your palms to face each other, come down the middle. Inhale up and exhale back down again. Inhale up. Exhale, back down again. One more here, inhale, up. And turn the palms to face each other and come down the middle. Let your arms rest on the floor by your hips and we'll move on to our head nod. So keeping your head heavy on whatever it's resting on, do a little nod and release. Inhale, tiny nod. Exhale, release. Nod and release. One more here. Little nod and release. Let's go back to the shoulders for a moment. We're gonna find neutral doing our elevation and depression, basically our shoulder shrugs. So lift your arms up a little bit off the floor, palms are faced in. Find that place where the upper back and upper chest are equally wide. And then just shrug your shoulders towards your ears and down towards your heels. Inhale up towards your ears, exhale down towards your heels. And what we're looking for is as you go down, the part of your back below your shoulder blades, you feel um, maybe a sense of puffiness or compression. That's that tissue changing. You'll feel it the most doing this exercise here because of course we're laying on the tissue that is changing with that shrug downwards, yeah? Let's move on to our ab grip. So take your hands behind your head. Have your elbows where your ribs and shoulders are in neutral, so right? Elbows are not flat on the floor and they're also not straight up at the ceiling. Double check that your feet are light, your pelvis is heavy, your low back is light, and your ribs are heavy. You're gonna inhale, do a little nod here. Exhale, curl up and look at your knees. Inhale, hold, exhale back down again. Now remember this nod, your head just stays heavy in your hands, then soften through the front of the ribs, curl up between shoulder blades and belly button is heavy on the floor. And then you're gonna extend the ribs to come back down again. So that part of your back between your shoulder blades and your belly button doesn't lift away from the floor. Inhale, nod, exhale, curl, inhale, hold. Exhale, down, we'll do one more like this. Inhale, nod, exhale, curl, inhale. Exhale, back down again. Now we're gonna do a little add on. You're gonna exhale, curl up. You're gonna inhale, just stay here, exhale. Can you curl higher without imprinting? Inhale, exhale, one more inhale here, and then exhale back down again. So three breaths at the top, we're doing that two more times. Exhale, curl up, inhale, exhale, curl a little higher, but keep that low back light, inhale, exhale. Can you curl even higher? Inhale, and exhale, come back down again, one more here. Exhale as you curl up, low back is light, pelvis is heavy, inhale. Exhale, can you round slightly higher? Inhale into the back of the ribs. Exhale, curl a little higher, inhale. And exhale back down again, Woo, those are fun. Open your elbows wide, let your knees rock side to side. So I don't know about you folks, but right, the tissue between my belly button and my low ribs on the front of my body was going, hello, working hard, hanging out up here, trying to make a deeper curve. And let's flip on to our tummies for a little bit of breaststroke press. So, right, you're gonna have your hands beside your head. Fingertips to elbows are on the floor, legs are close together, kneecaps are pointing down. You're on the tip of your nose in the middle of your breastbone. And then I want you to just lightly press the top of the foot into the floor to get some tone in the legs and the lower torso. You're gonna to inhale, slide your shoulders away from your ears. 
Exhale, use your back muscles to lift your upper chest away from the floor. You're still looking at the floor as you take your inhale. Come back down again. Inhale, slide your shoulder blades. Exhale, lift. So the curve of your neck and the curve through your rib cage are equal. Back down again. Inhale, slide your shoulder blades. Exhale, extending up. So if your ribs don't move a lot, your neck, neck doesn't either. And back down again. Inhale, slide your shoulder blades. Exhale, lift. Inhale, hold. Exhale, back down again. Let's make it a true breath. Inhale, up. Exhale, down. Inhale, up. Exhale, down. One more, up and down. Arms alongside the body, palms facing the ceiling. Notice your shoulders are protracted when you turn your palms to face the ceiling. So we're just going to inhale, turn our palms inwards, get our upper back and upper chest equally wide. Exhale, and lifting up. Inhale, exhale back down again. Now remember, you're going to keep the top of that foot gently pressed in the floor as you lift up and back down again. Inhale, turn your palms inwards. Exhale, lift. Inhale, exhale down. Now let's try two on the two breaths. So inhale, up, exhale down. Inhale, up. And exhale down, hands under your forehead. Now, right with your arms in this position, you can either lift your arms up with you or lift your head away from your arms. Top of the foot still gently pressed into the floor. You're gonna inhale, open your collarbones wide. Exhale, use your back tissue to lift. Inhale, hold. Exhale down, inhale, slide your shoulder blade. Exhale, lift, inhale, hold. Exhale down. Inhale, exhale, lift, inhale, hold, and down. Two breath, inhale, up, exhale, down. Inhale, up, exhale, down. One more, up, and down. We're gonna drop into our shell stretch. So right, remember you can either sit back over your heels, round out your back, or if you're having an unhappy knee or a low, hip today, just lay on your back and hug your knees into your chest, a little side to side rock in either position is nice. If you're on your back, you might just kind of rock on the knees side to side. If you're on your knees, you can rock your hips, you can rock your shoulders, you can rock your head. Right? A lot more way to play with things if you're on your knees, but you got to listen to what your body's telling you is the better position. Anyways, time for the hundred. So, Let's pop onto our back so we can go there right now. Like something extra under your head, you want to start this exercise with it under your head. And remember, you're using that because the back of your neck has a, is has a tendency to be tight and your chin has a tendency to lift towards the ceiling as you lay on your back. And lots of times I will start with this under my head at the beginning of class, by the end of class, I don't need it anymore, right? It's just uh, gotta get rid of the stiff stuff in the neck. Anyways, right, let's find neutral before we get going. So right, feet light, pelvis heavy, low back light, ribs heavy, right? So you can basically slide a silk scarf under your low back. Your low back is between your belly button and your tailbone. Now, from here, we're gonna to go to our imprint if we're gonna lift those legs. So exhale to find your imprint. Lift your legs up one at a time, bring them together if they're up there. Inhale, nod, exhale, curl up to look at your knees. And go in, two, three, four, five, out, two, three, four, ten. Sniff, blow, 20, in, out, 30. Now, if you want to make it hard, the legs are straight. Out, two, three, four, 40. In, out, 50. In, out, 60. In, out, 70. You're still curled up. Out, two, three, four, 80. In, out, two, three, four, 90. In, out, two, three, four, 100. Take an inhale, exhale. Let's come on down, hug the knees into your chest. If your legs were up, if your feet were on the floor, 
Let your feet stay on the floor. We'll just do a little bit of a rock of the knees side to side here. Remember if you have a tendency towards sore hips, you have your legs up. Let's not have them right tight together. It's just a great way to irritate the hip joint and we don't wanna do that. So, all right, let's come up to a seated position. And we're going to just do a little bit of something for the external rotators are our humerus bone, right? That's all the tissue in the back of your shoulder. Counteracts the stuff we do all day long with that in, uh, humerus bone internally rotated, right? Anytime you pick something up, it's internally rotated. So, right, all I want you to do is have your elbows bent at a right angle, have your elbows a little bit forward of your body, find somewhere comfortable for you to sit. And the reason I want your elbows a little forward of your body, it's easier to just turn the humerus bone in the joint if I'm here, my shoulder's gonna wanna move, I don't want that. So all we're gonna do is we're just gonna exhale and pull your hands away from each other, inhale, bring them in, exhale, pull them away from each other, inhale in, and ideally, as you're doing this, you're feeling a little bit of something through the back of the shoulder girdle. If you're tightening your chest, you might even feel stretched there today. Exhale, pull the hands apart, inhale together, keep those elbows forward. Two more, exhale, open, inhale, close. Last one, open and close. While we're set up, we're gonna do a little bit of our half roll back. So we're gonna have our legs right tight together, scoop our back round, reach our arms out, shoulders are down. Is your poop bone pulled towards your belly button? What about the low ribs? Are they pulled towards your belly button a bit too? Right on that front end. Now we're gonna take an inhale here. Exhale, rock backwards on your butt and inhale, rock forward. Now as you rock back, you wanna feel like you're trying to tuck your tail under and kind of pull your pubic bone towards your belly button even more to help the back stay round because we're opening the hip joint and we're closing the hip joint. We're just keeping that C curve in our spine the whole time. Exhale, rock back. Inhale, rock forward. Two more here, rock and back. And forward, last one, rock and back. And forward. Now we're gonna do our slow roll down. And the beginning of our slow roll down is that same idea of pulling the tail under to go backwards. So, right, let's find our C curve again. 10 count to get on your back. You're gonna take an inhale. Exhale, pull that tail under, curling back 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. We're gonna do that two more times. I want you to come up. If you uh, have a hard time coming up, just bring one knee into your chest, pull yourself up with that leg. But remember, if your low back hurts to do that, just get up however you get up. Let's find your C curve again. Drop your shoulders, take an inhale. Exhale, curl your tail under 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. And let's come right back up again. Last one of these. Exhale as you curl back 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, two and one. We're gonna stay down here. We're gonna to go to a little bit of our single leg circle. I want your legs bent, your feet within the width of your pelvis, your collarbones wide. You're gonna lift one leg up to tabletop or you can go to straight leg. But the only reason you would go to straight leg is if being here is comfortable. If this hurts, bent leg is a better choice for you. We're gonna go inside outside with that circle. Inhale to start your circle. Exhale to finish it. Three, four, and five. Let's reverse going outside to inside. Two, three, four. Is your other foot still light on the floor? If it's heavy, it's doing a lot of the work. Let's switch legs. We want the torso doing the work. So, right, we're gonna bring your other leg up to tabletop or straight leg, make sure the foot on the floor is light. 
And we're going inside to outside. Two, three, four, and five. Let's reverse outside to inside. Two, three, four, and five. And place your foot down. Let's come off our backs and we'll go to our basic spine twist here. So remember in our spine twist, we wanna be sitting up nice and tall. Legs are either crossed or they can be tight together or you can be diamond legs, whatever. We just don't wanna be in this kind of slouchy position. Hands can be on ribs or arms out to the side. If your arms are out to the side, right? Ideally, you can see your fingers in your peripheral vision when you look straight forward. We're gonna do three inhales to turn. Going in, two, three, exhale, center. You feel the muscles of your waist turning you. In, two, three, exhale, center. Now remember, this is not a huge range of motion because we are keeping that pelvis stable and quiet. We're just rotating basically from belly button up, step below, there's a little turn in it too. Your sacrum gets a little bit of a rotation here, believe it or not. One more here, in, two, three, exhale, center, other side, two, three, and center. Now, because we didn't roll like a ball last week, we're gonna roll like a ball today. So I want you to be far enough forward on your mat that you got space behind you. I want you to grab a hold of the back of your legs, scoop your back into that C curve, think that, tucking that tail under. Now, keep rolling back, sneak your feet in. When your feet lift up, that's your balance point. Elbows point down at the floor. And you're gonna use your core to rock back and forth, not your head. You're gonna inhale, rock back, lifting your bum right up off the floor, and exhale, come forward. Inhale, rock back, exhale forward. Oh, my block is back there. And right, you're gonna inhale, rock back, exhale forward. You're trying to keep your back round. You're trying to keep the space between your heels and your bum the same the whole time. If you gotta pump your legs a little bit, you can do that, right? And if this hurts, don't do it. Walking back and forward. One more here. Coming right up onto those shoulder blades and back up again. Let's do a slow roll down to get onto our backs. So, right, find your C curve, drop your shoulders, take an inhale, exhale, rolling back 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Now, from here, we're just going to do a little bit of our single leg stretch today, which is done in our same position as the 100. Now, right, just like with the 100, you don't have to lift your head in this exercise, but unlike the 100, the legs have to come up. So we're gonna find our imprint, lift our legs up to tabletop, grab one leg with both hands, and then inhale, nod, exhale, curl up. You're gonna straighten your other leg. Then you're gonna switch which leg is straight. Now, if you take your outside hand to your ankle and the inside hand to your knee, that helps your leg track straight. But it's a bit of a rub the tummy, tap the head kind of thing. Exhale as you switch. Four, three, two, one. Bring your knees together, put your head down, and a little rock of the knees side to side. It's always nice after that. Now we're gonna move on to obliques. You can put your feet on the floor for this, or you can just leave your legs where they are right now and pop your hands behind your head. And if your legs are still up, bring those legs into tabletop. Inhale, nod, exhale, curl up. Inhale here, exhale, rotate, inhale, center. Exhale, rotate, inhale, center. Exhale, lay down. Exhale, curl up, inhale, rotate. Other side. And back down again. Curl up, think shoulder to knee, shoulder to knee, and down. Exhale, curl up, shoulder to knee, shoulder to knee, and down. Two more, curl up, shoulder to knee, shoulder to knee, and down, right? Remember, you're coming across, cross to that knee, to the other side, 
And down, good. Let's place our feet down. If they were up, elbows drop sideways to the floor again. Little side to side rock to the knees here. So just go, oh yeah, that kind of feels nice. And we're going to go to a little bit of our shoulder bridge. So right shoulder bridge is an exercise where we're lifting our butt up off the floor without uh, articulating our spine. Yeah, and then we do little add-ons on it. So right neck and neck, straight into your head, feet within the width of your body, collarbones wide, take an inhale. Exhale, lift your pelvis up to the ceiling. Well, up, not to the ceiling. <laughs> Let's come back down again. Take an inhale. Exhale, lift up, reaching your knees over your toes. Can you feel how that gets you a bit of a stretch in the front of the hip? And back down again. Now, if you're not feeling that stretch, your back might still be arched. So as you lift up, really think pubic bone to belly button, pull your heels from your bum. That helps open up your hip joint and come back down again. I'm gonna do that one more time. Reaching your knees towards your toes as you lift. And back down again. Now we're gonna do our add-ons. Remember, it's one of two, uh, one of three things. One, your heels are gonna lift, alternating feet, right? Two, leg comes to tabletop and down, alternating feet. Three is barely lifting one foot at a time off the floor. That's the hardest one of the bunch. We're doing this with the pelvis at the top, right? Not with the pelvis on the floor. And remember, this exercise ultimately is about stabilizing that pelvis. So we're going to take an inhale. Exhale, press our feet in the floor, lift up, stack your knees over your ankles. Inhale, lift one foot. Exhale, put it down. Inhale, lift your other foot. Exhale, put it down. Inhale, lift. Exhale, down. Are your hips still at the top or have you dropped down a bit? Lift and down. One more here, lift and down. Take an inhale. Exhale, put your butt on the floor. A little side to side rock is always nice after that. We're gonna do a touch of our rollover prep. So if you like something extra under your head, pop it under your head. We're gonna find our imprint, bring our hands to our forehead, palms facing the ceiling, right? Because uh, arms ideally are not doing anything, neck, shoulders are not doing anything in this exercise. They may react slightly. If they react a lot, you're trying too hard. Now, you got to get the lower body into position. So, right, you're still in your imprint. Let's lift those legs up to tabletop, but bring your feet way higher than is typical. So, unbend those knees a little bit, drop your knees towards your chest a little bit, and cross your ankles. Now, from here, you're going to take an inhale. Exhale, point your tail up towards the ceiling. Inhale, put your tail back down. Exhale, curl. Inhale, release. Now, right as you curl, your ribs are going to get heavier into the floor. Right? So that's part of what helps you know you're doing it right. Curl and release. And if your jaw is clenching, you don't need to do that. Let's cross the ankles the other way. Take an inhale. Exhale, point your tail up towards the ceiling. Inhale, put it down. Exhale, curl, inhale, release. Exhale, curl, inhale, release. Two more, curl and release. And if you're getting a little stretch in your low back, you're doing it right, that's all we're working on here. Last one and release, good. Now, let's get those feet down on the floor. We're gonna do something to make the front of the legs and hips feel happier again. So let's flip on to our tummies, please, folks. And we're going to go to just a little bit of single leg extension right away today. And our single leg extension is the one where you're lifting one leg at a time, backwards in space. Now, notice as I do this, my leg is not lifting very high at all. And right, the white part of my leg is uh, the front of my thigh. It's not coming off the floor because it's not about doing that. And, but right, we're trying to keep the legs straight. So hands are under your forehead, shoulders out of your ears, your belly button's in. Now, all we're gonna do from here is inhale to prepare and exhale 
reach one leg up. Now, do you feel the compression where the thigh and the butt meet? Let's take the leg back down again. That's what you're looking for to do the exercise. Inhale, exhale, reach out your foot, leg is straight as you lift and back down again. Inhale, exhale, lift. Feel that work right where the thigh and the butt meet and come back down again. Now let's see if we can find it on the other side. So, right, support the low back, exhale, lift, inhale, exhale, back down again. Exhale, lift, inhale, hold, exhale, back down again. Inhale, exhale, do you feel compression where you thigh and your butt meet? And down, one more here, lift, and down. And let's just relax, let your hips rock side to side for a moment. We're gonna come back to the two breath and we're gonna alternate legs. Seeing if we can find that on each leg, alternating at a faster pace. So, right, collarbones are wide, you're on the middle of your breastbone, your back is a little supported, right? So the belly is not lax. There's just a little bit of tone there. Now, all you're gonna do is inhale to prepare, exhale, reach one leg up, inhale down. Exhale, reach your other leg up, inhale down, up, and down, do you feel the work, right? That sense of compression right where your thigh and your butt meet. Exhale, lift, inhale down, exhale, lift, inhale down. Two, and one more on each side and rest. Now, I just want you to take your hands beside your head and we're gonna do another version of our breaststroke prep right now. Uh, the very first one that we do, but rather than just lifting your chest, you're going to lift your arms with you as you go. So fingertip to elbow comes off the floor. So top of the foot's pressed into the floor. You're going to inhale, slide your shoulders out of your ears. Exhale, lift. Inhale, hold. Exhale, down. Inhale, slide your shoulder blades. Exhale, lift. Inhale, hold. Exhale, back down again. Inhale, slide your shoulder blades. Exhale, lift. Inhale, hold. And exhale down, one more here, inhale, exhale, lift, and down. Good, let's go to our shelf stretch. Round out your back, sit towards your heels, all side to side rock, breathing. And let's go to uh, a little bit of our side leg work. We're gonna go to our kick to start with. So the legs are gonna be at a 45 to the torso. So right, remember, great way to figure that out is line up the back of your torso against the back of your mat, then angle those feet forward, flex them. And make sure you're not rolled back on your hip, that you're a little bit, it, it'll feel like you're forward, yeah? Now in that effort to get the hip forward, don't roll the shoulder back, yeah? Now, all we're gonna do from here, either hand down or hand on your leg, lift that top leg up, kick it forward twice, going in, in, exhale, point your foot and pull it behind you. And forward, in, in, exhale, pull back. Now, as you're doing this, you're trying not to let the torso roll backwards and forwards. The tendency is as we kick forwards, that the body rolls back. And as we kick back, the body rolls forward. We're trying to keep it fairly quiet. In, in, exhale, reach back. In, in, exhale, reach back. One more here, in, in, and reach. And after all that single leg extension we did earlier, if I took my leg back, totally felt it where my thigh and my butt met. Mr. Thet was saying, hello, Ruth. Now, let's go to a little bit of the side leg lift series. So I want you to be a straight line from your head to your feet. Hips are stacked. You wanna feel that the side of your ribs are on the floor, but not the side of your waist. Top of your head reaches opposite your toes. And you're just gonna lift that top leg up, flex your foot, bring it down, point your foot, reach up, flex your foot, bring it down, point your foot. Inhale as you go up, and exhale as you go down. Inhale as you go up. Now here's the tricky thing. I can get my leg higher by turning my knee out. 
That is not the point of this exercise, right? My knee doesn't turn out and then come back to parallel. Can you see the black stripe on the outside of my leggings? Can you see it the whole time? That's because I'm keeping my leg parallel. I could go higher if I turned out. Yeah, it's not what we're looking for. We're looking for the tissue on the outside of your hip, right back where my hand is, yeah? One more hip. Now, let's try a little staggered legs. So you're gonna lift the top leg, lift the bottom leg to meet it, take them both down. Up, squeeze your legs together and down. Inhale, lift, exhale, squeeze, slowly down. Up, squeeze, slowly down. One more here, up, squeeze, slowly down. Double leg lift, exhale, lift. Two, three, four, and five. Beautiful. We're just going to do this on the other side. So we're going to start with the kick. So line yourself up with the legs at that 45 degree angle, feet flexed, hips stacked, right? I'm not rolled back. Side of the waist is off the floor because that top sit bone is reaching away from the top of your head, but the side of the ribs are still on the floor. Lift your top leg up, kick it forward twice. Going in, in, exhale, point your foot and pull it behind you. And forward, in, in, exhale, point your foot and pull it behind you. In, in, exhale, reach back. In, in, exhale, reach back. In, in, exhale, reach. In, in. Exhale, reach. One more here, in, in, and reach. Straight line from your head to your feet. Lift your top leg up, flex your foot. Bring it down, point your foot. Reach up, flex your foot. Bring it down, point your foot. Inhale to go up, exhale to come down. Inhale to go up, exhale to come down. Inhale up. Exhale down, inhale up, exhale down. One more here, is your leg still parallel? Already, staggered leg, inhale, lift the top leg, exhale, lift the bottom leg, take it down. Up, squeeze and down. Inhale, lift, exhale, squeeze and down. Inhale, lift, exhale, squeeze, slowly down. Up, squeeze, slowly down. Up, squeeze, slowly down. One more here. Up, squeeze, slowly down. Double leg lift. Exhale, lift. Two, three, four, and five. Good. We're just going to do a little bit of a release for our hips. So I just want you to pop onto your back. You like something extra under your head, pop it under your head. Step your feet to the width of your mat. And we'll just drop one knee into the middle, pick it up, drop your other knee into the middle and pick it up. Remember, this is causing pain. Don't go into the place of pain. Tug, stretch, pull, good words, pain, never. Pain is always a no-go zone. So just back off, be gentler. And if you work gently, the tissue will start to let go. If you punch that pain mechanism in the face, right? You just kind of push it right hard onto something that's uncomfortable. You're just going to encourage it to be there. And right, seriously, why do we want pain in our bodies? Let's come to a seated position, folks. And we're going to do a little bit of spine stretch forward right now. Now, remember with our spine stretch forward, we can either sit with our feet shoulder distance apart, or we can sit with our legs in a diamond shape. Um, and uh, the big important thing is that we're not kind of rolled off the back of our pelvis, we're right up on top of it. If your legs are straight, feet are shoulder distance apart. Either case, hands are on the front of the legs. You could even stick a yoga block under your butt if you have one. Because here's the thing, 80 degrees uh, flexion in the hip, which with a yoga block under your bum, that's 80 degrees. Um, that's normal range of motion. Uh, having what I have, 90 is abnormal. You don't have to have it. Yeah. At least that's what the physios say. 
Let's be up nice and tall. Take an inhale. Exhale, start with your head, round forward. Scoop your belly button in. Inhale into your back. And exhale back up again. Now remember, you're going to keep your elbows soft here. You're not straightening your arms. You're trying to reach for your feet. You're trying to bend your back above the belly button. Inhale. Exhale back up again. We're just trying to get some movement through that rib cage part of our back. Exhale into round forward. And of course, it doesn't have a lot of range of motion because there's ribs in there. And come back up again. One more like that. Exhale, start with your head, go down. Inhale into your back. And exhale, come all the way back up again. Let's do it on a two breath. Exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up. One more of these down. And up. And let's just add a little bit of arms into here. So arms parallel to the floor. Collarbones are wide when you're sitting up. Take an inhale. Exhale round forward. You'll protract slightly. And as you come up, the collarbones get wide again. Exhale round. Inhale up. Now you're not really forcing that protraction. It's just part of rounding. And up. Remember, protract is that thing where the shoulders come forward around the sides of the ribs a little bit. Exhale round. And inhale up. Now. Um, a few weeks ago, we uh, did this thing where we were working our, our J curve a little bit. And uh, wait, I haven't really touched on it since then. So I thought, oh, I should revisit it. So right, our C curve, we're trying to make an even curve from our head to our tail. I know mine doesn't look even. I'm trying my best to be there. Some of you might have that. What we're looking for in our J curve is that we have a sense of roundness in the low back, right? So that's my roundness. And we still want to be straight in our upper back. And uh, there's a couple of exercises we do in Pilates that use the J curve. And we're just going to have it as be part of a balance today. So all I want you to do is I want you to curl back off your sit bones, but have your chest open nice and wide, like you're wearing something on your chest you want the world to see. Sneak your feet in closer. And then we're going to lift one foot at a time up. And you're in your balance point here. Now, right? We're just gonna hold five, four, three, two, and one, and come back down again. Now, we're gonna do that three times. So we're gonna curl back off our sit bones, sneak our feet in, lift them up, keep the chest still lifted. Now, if you wanna make it harder, let go, and go five, four, three, two, and one. And put your feet down. We're gonna do that one more time. So we're gonna, Scoop the low back around, but have the chest lifted. You're off the back of your sit bones. You're pulling your tail under. Sneak your feet in closer, lift up, find your balance point. And if you want to, you can let go. And we're gonna hold for five, four, three, two, and one. And grab a hold and come back down again. And let's come over onto our tummy to do our swan dive prep because that'll help open up the front of the hip again. The swan dive prep is our bigger back extension. We're trying to make a shape like a banana. And right when we're doing our swan dive prep, um, we're trying to have a curve in our spine that's equal, kind of like a rocker in a rocking chair. Because eventually this shape rocks just like a rolling like a ball does, except for we're doing it on the front of our body. And it's really nice to have a nice thick mat for that. So that's why I'm never gonna show it to you guys because I suspect you're all on yoga mats. So hands are beside your head. Your legs are a little bit apart and your heels are pulled towards the middle so that your kneecaps are, point, are not pointing straight down at the floor. They're just slightly turned out from being pointing straight at the floor. Now from here, you're just gonna inhale, slide your shoulders away from your ears. Exhale, use your back to come up onto your elbows then use your arms and your bum to come higher. Your front of your thighs still on the floor. You're gonna inhale, reach out your toes, feel your bum working. And come back down again. Inhale, slide your shoulder width. Exhale, coming up. Inhale, hold. And exhale, back down again. Inhale, slide your shoulder width. Exhale, finding that banana shape. Inhale, your elbows could be straight and mine don't get there. Sometimes, sometimes I do. And back down again, depends on how flexible I am. Coming up, inhale. And exhale, 
back down again. Let's try two on the two breaths. So just inhale up, exhale down. One more up, you feel your bum working and back down again. Last shell stretch for the class. So I just want you to sit back over your heels, down at your back, scoop your belly button in, a little side to side rock here. Now, I want to finish standing today. So I'm just going to move my iPad to the other side of the room again. And we're going to look at those infinity signs or figure eights that we were doing earlier and see if our body actually has a little bit more fluidity and flow and maybe a little more, more range of motion than we did at the beginning of class. So I want you to have your feet about shoulder distance apart. You're going to start with your thumb and you're going to just draw your figure eight. And then I want you to, right, just see if it's a little bigger than it was right at the beginning of class. Remember your opposite heel can come off the floor. Can you get all the way down to the floor now? I can. Yeah. Now let's try the pinky on that side. So figure eight, find it. Once you found it, how big a space can you carve? Can you carve all the way down to the floor and back up again? Or are you at least getting closer to the floor than you were earlier with less restriction? Yeah. Now, let's go to the other hand. Find it with the thumb. Then make it big. Can your heel come off the floor? Of course your heel comes off the floor. Can you get to the floor? That's a better question. Yeah. And then let's do it with our pinky. Find it on this side. How big can it go? Last one. Nice, bring your feet closer together. We're gonna to do three roll downs. So you're gonna take an inhale to prepare. Exhale, start with your head rolling forward. Get all the way down to the floor. Inhale, bend your knees. Exhale, press through the center of your foot as you come back up again. Take an inhale. Exhale, curling around. Start with your head. Heavy dangling arms. Inhale, soften your knees. Exhale, back up again. Remember, you don't want to touch your legs when you do this. Trying to get the torso to support itself. Exhale as you go down. Inhale, soften the knees. And exhale, coming all the way back up again. I am calling us cooked there for today. Thank you for coming and hanging out with me and doing a little Pilates Pilates.